everybody, how's it going? Doctor Incompetent here, and let's play some Rogue Adventure, shall we? Well, I haven't played a mobile game in a bit, and this is a good one to show because I haven't played it that much. I've played for about, I don't know, half hour? I booted this game up on my phone, just testing stuff, and I decided that this was actually worth doing a video about because uh, it's surprisingly good once you get into it, in my opinion, if you like deck building roguelikes in the vein of Slay the Spire and, uh, you know, perhaps Monster Train, but it's much more like Slay the Spire, but I think it has enough unique aspects uh, to make it its own package. And so let's dive in. We're going to start a new adventure, and we're, you know, beginning a whole brand new account here on a free-to-play version of the game. Tutorial. Greetings, adventurer. It's a pleasure to meet you. Well, thank you. Before starting, I have a few simple rules to explain that will help you in this epic adventure. To complete the mission, you'll have to cross five dangerous worlds and defeat all the opponents. Choose a class to start. Alright, so you can only begin with the warrior, but right away you see that there's a bunch of classes, which is uh, quite interesting in terms of depth compared to some of the other um, games like this out there. So the warrior has 70 hit points and its base class bonus is basically that every time you play a combat card you get one shield and you can think of shield like block in Slay the Spire. It is a defensive measure that will mitigate incoming damage and once it's used you will then take damage on your hit points and you can upgrade your character's class ability or bonus um, to give yourself something like three resistance. And the cool thing about this game is that um, all of these keyword abilities will be explained when you mouse over them and hold your finger down, um, or I'm playing on Bluestack, so hold the mouse button down, and you'll get an explanation. So it's very transparent about the systems, which is very helpful. Um, and we're going to start. This is the map where you choose your path and which room to visit. There are different locations. The treasure room, which gives you coins and gems. The merchant room, which is where you can buy stuff using the various currencies in the game. And an enemy room where you fight either a normal, elite, or boss enemy. And we want to select the first floor, which is down here at the bottom. And you'll see that the pathing is extremely reminiscent of something like Slay the Spire, but... It does not have any of the like random encounters. Uh, it's you pretty much see what you're going to get, and you know right away. Like, oh, okay, here's a treasure room. Here's a merchant. Here's a regular enemy. Here's an elite enemy. So we're going to start with this regular enemy. And enemies, it's time to fight. Let's give those damn monsters what they deserve. But first, you need to know something. Uh, some basic fighting rules. You can defeat enemies by playing cards from your hand. Continue. You can click on these icons to see the detail of the card, or just drag a card to read its description. There are two types of card. Combat cards, which are the ones that have the sword, and they're mainly focused on attack and defense, and magic cards, which have the lightning bolt, and their buffs, debuffs, heals, and much more. Your cards in-game are composed of your draw pile, your discard pile, and your exile pile. Okay. Um, so it's called Exile in Magic the Gathering, it's called Exhausted in Slay the Spire, and here it's Exiled. It means out of the game. Tutorial. Playing a card will cost one point of mana. Uh, when you, when this reaches zero, you must end your turn. So generally you have three mana, and they all cost one. So all the cards are equally costed of your mana. After playing a card... This will be replaced with a new card from the draw pile. And when you run out of cards, it just reshuffles your discard pile back into your draw pile. Um, and at the end of your turn, you discard your whole hand. Then the enemies get their turn and you draw a new hand. Click on an enemy to read its detail. You can observe the enemy's intent above them. Um, so its intent is like what it's going to do. And this is the kind of Slay the Spire aspect of this, which is fantastic because it's nice to get to plan. If an enemy intends uh, on attacking you, 
or intends to attack you, gain some shield to block part of the damage. For now, these notions are enough for you. You will learn much more by fighting. Good luck. All right. So here we are into the game screen. And, um, you know, it's a very basic interface. The pictures are pretty low resolution. And at first I was like, oh boy. Um, but don't let this, you know, simple aesthetic fool you. The game has, in my opinion, a lot of value and strategy built in, more than I was expecting. So we're gonna, we have three enemies that want to fight us. These, and you can um, mouse over it and, or click it with your finger and it says it's a forest sprite and it's normal. We don't really have any info about it except it has 16 hit points and that it's gonna wait on its turn. So this one's gonna wait and this one's gonna wait and the middle one wants to attack. So we're gonna need to generate some block. But remember that the warrior, every time it plays a combat card, it just gets block. So because we're only taking three damage incoming, we don't even actually have to block. We could also just kill this guy and not worry about it. Um, we have three uh, different types of cards in our hand, or different kinds of cards, I should say. Your hand is always, um, at least as far as I've seen it in this game, four cards, which are displayed at the bottom, and you can um, mouse, mouse over these, and this will deal six damage. And you basically just kind of like hold it down and you pick it up and then you drop it on whichever target you want to hit. So if we want to hit that guy for six, we do. Then this card has been replaced with another basic attack card, which does six. We also have a block card, which is going to give us five shield. Um, and then we have a, a magic card, which deals three damage and applies three weak. And weak is a status debuff that makes them do less damage. But I'm just going to focus everything and use all my attacks to kill the middle guy. And the other dudes are going to wait. That used all three of my mana. Now, at the bottom, you can see I have this little star is your draw pile. You can click on it. It's great. You can see your deck, see what's left in the deck. You can click on your exiled pile. I've got nothing in there. And you can click on your discard pile to see that I have three fighter cards that all deal six damage. The color of the card also reflects its rarity. These are all bronze or common rarity. And you have a very small deck to start out, just you know a base deck like Slate Aspire, and you're going to build it up by drafting cards when you win in a battle. So we're going to end the turn. And tick, 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 tick. They waited. They're done. Oh, let me actually go to settings really fast. Um, I like to have the enemy turns to be fast so that they're not um, taking a long time on their turn. Uh, that's just how I prefer it. Now, they're both going to attack me for three. So if I played this card, for example, I'd gain five shield plus one for being a warrior. Um, and, you know, right there, that's enough block. So what I'll do is I will do that. And we have six block. It's indicated here. Here's my health, 70 out of 70. And then in the shield, it says six block. So I'm going to take three plus three, six damage, and my block will absorb it all. I do not take any damage. Now in this kind of game, similar to uh, these deck building roguelikes, your hit points persist across all nodes on the map. So like if you take damage in this first fight, you're going to be down health for your next fight and so on. So you don't replenish your health at the end of the battle, so it's important to keep yourself topped off. Okay, after that, I'm just going to hit this guy twice um, and pass the turn. Just kind of very casually, just make sure I take no damage. Um, and you see they did their damage, but my block held up, and now they're going to wait again. This is a very easy fight. This is, after all, the tutorial. I'm just going to keep attacking, end my turn. A cool difference, as you can obviously see, with um, other deck building roguelikes that I'm familiar with, like Monster Train or Sway the Spire, is that there's no value, um, mana value, that's different for the cards. They're all one. So you can just kind of take that off the table, and it really, really emphasizes making sure that all of your decisions are optimal and that you don't have garbage cards. And we kill that guy, and we win. We get 23 coins. We have zero. Now we have 23. Click to continue. Um, and we made some money. After defeating an enemy, you can choose a card as a reward. 
If you're not interested in any of those cards, you can skip and earn one gem. Defeating a boss will always give rare cards as a reward. Okay, so here we go. Um, you can see these cards that are rewards, and you can kind of swipe around to all of the different ones. You get three choices, and then you can also choose a gem. Now, when you go to a merchant, you can use gold to do like buy new cards, to remove cards from your deck, to heal yourself. You can also use gems um, for various things as well, um, buffs, or you can buy what are kind of this game's equivalent of artifacts, which are like permanent effects for your character that don't go into your deck. So both currencies are, are quite good, um, but we need cards right now. So this is an angel archer, and in square brackets you see how it has the kind of keyword angel, and that's a tribal. And there's lots of tribal that I've seen so far. There's like robot, there's beast man, there's angel, um, and these cards synergize with each other. So if you go in this direction, you might want to start drafting a bunch. Like, for example, this card does two, two damage for each angel card in the game. And what I understand that means is in your deck or discard pile. Um, I believe it counts the exile pile as well, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But basically, it's just like, how many do you have? And then it starts to scale up based on that number. Um, and then you heal two. So you deal two, you heal two. That's kind of nice. Healing is an effect that's not very prevalent, at least with the warrior. Um, this is a magic card. Remove the shield of the target opponent and you deal 7 damage. Very nice. And this one is cool. Um, put a card from your draw pile into your hand and you deal 6 damage to a random enemy. So you have to use one of your mana, which is very valuable. But if you've got a card that you're really, really trying to get to, um, you know, this helps you just tutor right for that card. Put it in your hand and then you can play it. Uh, so you have to make sure you play this with mana left to play the card that you get. But it's very powerful. I think in this case, I'm going to take Desert Priestess because it just does 7 damage uh, and removes their shield. So it's very useful if the enemy is blocking. Now we have a choice of going for an elite monster or going for a regular monster. But if we do go elite, we have to fight two in a row. And then we get a treasure. And this side would take two regular enemies in an elite no treasure. So I'm actually going to go for the elites. Okay. And we're fighting this um, lycanthrope right here. Uh, and it has an ability called wolf leather that says whenever a wolf dies, this creature gains five shield until its next turn. Um, and it says this in enemy intends to evoke other creatures. That's what the kind of like pentagram symbol means. It's an elite enemy. It's not normal. Um, and I think that means it's going to summon buddies so we're just going to hit its face as much as we can it's not doing damage to us and we can weaken it and we'll end the turn all right so it summoned this little wolf right now they're both going to attack us okay now in my experience with elite enemies you're just going to take damage there's very very little way especially without many cards that you're going to protect yourself from that reality so i'm going to focus on um just taking down this target. I will take five damage, um, but it'll give him five block, and that's a bummer, but it removes four damage that we were going to take, and each of those combat cards gave us one block, so we're at three block. We're going to take five, and his five block will um, fall off at the end of his turn, and he'll be weak for two turns. So again, you can click on this, and it's great because it tells you exactly what this debuff does. Weakened creatures deal 30% less damage with attacks. And there's lots of transparent information up here. Um, this is my warrior ability, which means every time I play a combat card, which is a card with a sword, um, I get a shield. End the turn. All right, so it's going to just punch us. And we did take some permanent damage. Um, okay, so uh, let's just hit him hit him, and I think we'll play this. This just does 7 damage. I'm just DPSing this down. I could have done this to keep the weakness up uh, longer, you know, so it the, the guy does less damage, and there is an argument for that, but, oh no, he wants to make a new guy, so let's just keep doing as much uh, damage as we possibly can. This way, if we draw well, he has 18 health, we can just focus fire 
um, and kill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. So we hit it once, we hit it again, and then we just can use this, and it's over. And we win, and we only took five health, and we got 24 coins and two gems. And then now we're going to get good cards to choose from. These are silver cards, you see, um, bronze and um, bronze. So, you know, I don't know, common. They said you're guaranteed a rare but from a boss, but this is a card that is um, like an uncommon, basically. This does what we have another card that does, which is remove shield and applies five weak. That's very long. That's five turns of weakness, which is good. Um, I really like this Sapphire Guard card at the moment. You get five shield and you gain a mana, which means basically you get you play this and it gives you the mana back, so you get to play an extra card. But you get this overcharge status, which means you can no longer gain mana for the rest of the turn. So you can't just make a deck full of these and go infinitely. Um, but at the same time, it's very good for right now for us to just, you know, get some block and go again. All right, now we're fighting um, three giant wasps. And these two ones want to put a negative effect on us. Um, and this one's going to attack us for five. So... I think then let's just focus fire on this one right here. Uh, great, we got this card, which we wanted, which means uh, we now basically block, guarantee the block for all incoming damage, and we can use all of our mana to do as much damage as possible right there. All right, so they put two different negative effects on us, and you can click on these to see that we're frail, which means the amount of shield that we get is reduced by 50%, which is brutal, and then we do 50% less damage. So all of this is bad, but we drew this card again, which is terrific. Now, we're only going to take six damage, so that's not horrible. We play this. Now we block three, just right off the get-go. Um, and I'm going to hit... Eh... I don't know what I want to do. I can play this to block for two, but that's pretty bad. Um, um, no, I think I can just hit. You can see that I'm only debuffed for one turn, so this turn's going to be a bad turn. Um, but if I play this, um, I will take no damage. So we just do this, take no damage, let it happen. There. And now they're back to this pattern. And if we can kill, we can't though, unless we draw exactly this card. Um, we are gonna take some, ooh, well we were gonna take damage, but then we drew this baller card and now we're not. So now we kill this guy, we only get one negative effect and we block for all damage. That was very good to draw that right there. We have a small deck, we only have 10 cards, so the chances are pretty high, but now we're just frail, but we're only going to take 3 damage, so it, you know, we can get that health uh, by simply playing cards. Oh, I'll play this fine, that's a little overkill, but we won't take any damage. Alright, so we're going to get frail again. Play this, and guarantee the block, attack, attack attack and that's fine so we're going to be able to um kill this guy he should wait and he should attack only for three so what we can do is uh oh no we didn't get frail we got weakness oh okay well that's actually you know in some ways better all right so now we're going to block for full and didn't take any damage and now it's just us so we can easily just lean into this guy. Alright, now he gave us Frail. So he alternates the debuffs. He gave us Frail, but we are so ready for this. Um, we can hit him for 7. Six. Oh, look at that. Almost can kill this guy. Not quite, but next turn dead. We took no damage on this elite fight. That's tremendous. All right, so we get 28 coins, two gems, and we get a look at some good cards, hopefully. Um, not really, unfortunately. 
So this card does three damage, but it has a quest, which means if we actually can kill three enemies with this card, it upgrades. Um, so that that might be fun. I've never experimented with that. This card is really, really good, um, you know, for its seven shield if they're going to attack. And if not, it does seven damage. It's a robot-themed card. And then this card says deal four damage for each card played this turn. So if you play this last, you know, if it counts itself, it's 12 damage. That's okay. Um, but I kind of want to experiment with this Elf Warrior. See how it goes. All right, we go to a treasure room. A treasure room. This is the easiest way to earn coins and gems. You'll also find random rarity chests from bronze to diamond, which can contain coins, gems, cards, and even skills. So let's open it and see what's inside. So there's a chest down here. Um, we take it. We take it. Ooh, we got a uh, Lady of the Dark Souls, which is a card that says deal three damage to all enemies for each card played this turn. Wow, that's quite strong. We'll take that. And then if you want to open this, you need to watch a video, or I think you could pay like $5.50 to get all these without ads. Um, I'm just not viewing the ads myself, so I'm just going to skip that. And we found a merchant. This is the right place if you want to spend some coins and gems. Here you can find a vast assortment of cards, skills, and useful services like healing, remove cards, and much more. Skills are powerful, permanent buffs that provide a passive bonus for the rest of the run. Yeah, those are the things I was talking about. They're kind of like relics or artifacts, um, and they give you a passive permanent buff. Okay, so what you can do is you can buy cards, and all, everything on this screen you buy with money, and they increase in rarity, and as they go up in rarity from you know common to uncommon to rare, the price goes up. You can also buy skills, which are the artifacts or relics. <laughs> How about I say this right? The relics or artifacts. And I have five gems. So, for example, I could buy this ghost shield, and at the start of every combat, I'd gain ten shield. Pretty good. There's also services where you can do things like healing yourself um, for 50 gold, and then there's gem services. So there's money, gold services, and gem services, and you can... Like, use this to just give yourself 100 coins, or, you know, there's different little buffs you can give yourself uh, to help your chances. And you can pay to win a bit, I guess, but I, I just play it free-to-play, so... Um, I'm going to... Go ahead and look at the cards. Is there anything that I would really, really want to buy um, right now? Young Witch is actually a pretty good card. If the target has weak, and we do have one card that applies weak, you get three mana. Um, so it's like you can use... If the enemy has weak, you can attack, attack, and then use this to get mana, but then you get overcharged. And it kind of has some reverse synergy with our other overcharged card. I'm actually just going to raise our max hit points by three for 50 gold. Um, and then I'm going to go over to skills and see if there's anything else I can buy. Taking... Unblock damage from an enemy will apply too weak to that enemy. Um, no, I think I'll just buy this ghost shield. Yep. And now we have just a free 10 block at the beginning of a fight. And we'll go over here for this treasure chest. And what do you do? You get one strength and one mana, but it requires your draw pile or your discard pile to be empty to be played. I haven't really found these cards, uh, and then it exiles after you use it, to be that helpful. It requires some serious timing. But, um, I don't know. Let's experiment with it. Fine, I'll, t I'll try it. I haven't messed with it because it just seems like it fills up your deck with a card that you can't use very well. Um, but, for example, right here I can. I mean, my discard, if you start with it, your discard pile is empty. And so if you play this... It now exhausts. You can see it's in my exhaust or my exile pile, but I get a boom, a boost right here of strength, which means it increases my attack damage by X, and in this case, it's one. So I got my mana back, and I got a strength bonus. So that's actually really, really good. Now both of these mushrooms want to block. Um, every time you attack this creature, shuffle a mushroom spores card into your discard pile. So they slow you down by putting like bum status cards in your discard pile. So we're just going to attack for as much damage as we possibly can. And turn. Alright, and then we can, yep, do this because it's amazing. And then... 4 damage. 
So we've only played one card, but yeah, see, when you combo this with that other card there, it's actually really, really good. Um, unfortunately, darn, I need the block, so this is fine. Okay, great. And then this will do 12 damage to everybody. What do these do? Lose one hit point, heal one, remove. Nah, it's okay. Um, we're done. I, un unfortunately, I didn't draw that when I needed to, but that's okay. If I can, I'd like to keep that guy alive. Nah, it's not going to work. Let's not get greedy. Let's just take him down. And then we can play this. And we can do that. And he wants to do six, but we're already blocking for that. I'm going to weaken this guy, actually. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to just try to stay alive long enough to use my elf and see if I can level it up. Oh, boy. That's a lot of mushrooms. Oh, boy. I'm going to I'm gonna get greedy. I'm going to pass, even though I have an extra energy and could have killed it, just to try to draw the elf warrior. Um... Oh, that's unfortunate. Um, lose one hit point, heal one. <laughs> we are having a tough time drawing it. All right, we didn't draw it, so let's just kill it and get out of here. All right. Um, apply two weak to all enemies, and if I get a hundred shield and combat, it upgrades. I gotta tell you, I'm having fun with these quest cards. Go for it. Let's try to see how we can get 100 shield. Right? Alright, so we're fighting two caterpillars, and they just want to attack. That's all they want to do. Alright, fine. That's too bad. Now, we can do this right now because of our... Um, Ghost Shield. And by the way, at the top of the screen, this is where your skills display in this kind of shaded bar here. This tells you at the time of the run, your health, your coins, your gems. And I can do this because of my Ghost Shield. So I can afford to just play that. And now they're going to block, which is tremendous. Um, I'll just apply too weak. Yeah, we'll do this. And actually, we're going to get to play this. We just play one more card. Um, I'm going to finish that guy. And then we can play that. Get the strength. We can put... Oh, we already have that, so we can't actually put that. Uh, we'll end the turn. Alright, this guy's got four block. And unfortunately, we drew exactly what we didn't want to... So we can kill this guy. But I'm going to get so greedy. Now I got to reshuffle, so there's a chance I draw the right card here. Um, I did not. Uh, we'll just apply weak, and we'll block, and we'll block. I'm waiting. I'm going to get this level up on this guy. You just wait. I'm doing this quest. Here it is. Oh, no, it's got four block. Okay, I got to watch out for that. Um, all right, we'll do this, and then we'll do this. Yes. All right, so now we only have to kill two enemies, and we upgrade that card. Now, that's really, really awesome. Okay, and... Oh. Deal two damage for each card in your discard pile. That could be good. Yeah, let's take that. That could actually pay out... Huge dividends for us. So why not? Okay, and we're at the shop. And here at the shop, we have 119 that we can spend. Um, I'm going to just boost our hit points again. I, I really, really like it. And I'm going to remove a card from our deck. I'm going to get rid of... Um, I'm going to get rid of a basic fighter card. Cool. All right, streamlining us. And now we're going to fight the boss of the Enchanted Forest. And oh my goodness, it, it is a Night Fawn, which looks like one of Santa's elves, and an evil forest guardian, which is masquerading as a Christmas tree. 
Um, at the end of the enemy turn, shuffle an evil berries card into the discard pile. All right, so they want to attack us. Okay, so here's what we do. Um, we'll apply weak to everybody. Absolutely. Um, this is a bad card to draw first. Now we'll just hit you in the face and hit you. Beautiful. Okay, we'll do this. Get an extra energy, and um, we can indeed do this. Let's see, they're going to do six damage to us. Um, I'm just going to do this, even though it's not going to um, help us out. It doesn't exile, so it's not a huge deal. Uh, but if I play this, I can then play this because our draw card will be empty. And then now, um, we get a strength. And we have two strengths, actually. And a resistance, so fantastic. Well, now we only have one strength, but still. Uh-oh, what is this? You cannot play the first and last card of your hand. Ooh, that's bad. Um, okay, and what does this one do again? All right, too weak to everybody. Okay, give him too weak. Uh-huh. Um, this guy's gonna, what, heal who for 10? Hopefully itself. I'm weakening this one even more. Um, with the, oh no, it heals everybody. Boy, that's brutal. I was gonna say with the hope that I could do that. Um, alright. I don't even care. This is, oh no, I can't do that. Um, it's a little awkward, but I can do this and then that. Take two damage at the end of your turn. Well, yeah, we're going to take some damage. But it's the boss, so it's okay. All right. Um, let me just go on a tirade attacking you. We've already gotten 64 shields, so we're almost going to upgrade that card, which is pretty fantastic. We're going to take 4 damage right here, but the damage from those berries can be mitigated by armor, so that's really good to know. Alright, we'll do this, of course. Um, let's just get rid of these berries. Exile it. Exile it, and then you can have that as a gift. All right, first and last card, no good. One. Um. All right. So they're going to heal. It's okay. <laughs> I am not drawing that card well. Does the tree hit you? Or does it just make berries? I mean, that's fine. Alright. Yeah. I see what's going on here. I'm gonna have to just out-damage the, uh... The healing of this thing and get rid of all the berries that I can basically um, oh this is gonna do a ton of damage though that's good yeah that card scales really well with the strength bonus that you get So sad. All right, that's fine. One, two, three. We're so close. Good. Good. 
Got it. All right, 24 coins, two gems. Click to continue, and we did it. Now we're gonna get a rare card. Um, oh boy, the music is going out of control. Deal seven damage, heal for unblocked damage dealt. Exile, hmm, it's not that great. Deal 12 damage, if this attack kills an enemy, gain three strength and three resistance. Exile, okay. Deal three damage to the target enemy three times. Strengths affect this card three times. Wow, that's pretty good with what we have. I mean, this is already just going to do nine damage, like, right off the get-go, and it doesn't exile itself. Uh, and I like that. I don't want it to exile itself. So I'll take uh, that card. And then um, we are now on the next level, which is called Deep Water, and you can see we have two starting plasts, and we keep going. We have to keep going for five worlds, I believe the game says we need to defeat. And that is a great first look at this rogue-like deck building mobile game. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments below what you think of the game. If you liked the video, please give it a like. That helps the channel tremendously. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. And thank you all so much for watching. I will check you guys next time. Let me know if you want to see more of this. Take care.